Welcome to this video tutorial on gastroesophageal reflux disease. GERD is a digestive disorder in which stomach acid or stomach contents come back up into the esophagus. It is a recurring and often chronic disease process, taking place at least twice a week or more and interfering with daily life. Anyone can develop GERD, but the risk increases with obesity, hiatal hernia, when part of the stomach pushes up through the diaphragm, stress, smoking, and consuming certain foods, such as carbonated beverages, coffee, and chocolate. Other risks include pregnancy, asthma, diabetes, delayed stomach emptying, or connective tissue disorders, such as scleroderma. The most common symptom of GERD is regular heartburn, a painful burning in the chest, sometimes spreading to the throat. Other common symptoms include the following. Acid reflux, or regurgitating food or sour liquid, chest pain, difficulty swallowing or painful swallowing, nausea and vomiting, dry cough, hoarseness or sore throat, bad breath, or damage to teeth. GERD is caused by frequent acid reflux. It occurs when the lower esophageal sphincter, a circular band of muscle around the bottom part of the esophagus, becomes weak or relaxes when it shouldn't. This allows stomach contents to rise up into the esophagus, causing heartburn. The lower esophageal sphincter becomes weak or relaxes due to certain things, including increased pressure on the abdomen from being overweight or pregnant, smoking, hiatal hernia, and certain medications, such as calcium channel blockers, antihistamines, asthma medications, painkillers, sedatives, or antidepressants. The constant backwash of acid can irritate the lining of the esophagus, causing inflammation, or esophagitis. This inflammation can wear away the esophageal lining, leading to complications such as esophageal ulcer, which may bleed, causing pain and difficulty swallowing, esophageal narrowing due to the formation of scar tissue, causing difficulty swallowing, or Barrett's esophagus, a precancerous condition. The diagnosis of GERD may be made on frequent heartburn and other symptoms, or a gastroenterologist may be recommended. There are several tests used to diagnose GERD. An upper GI or gastrointestinal endoscopy uses an endoscope to look inside the upper GI tract and is done at a hospital or outpatient center. If a biopsy is needed, a small piece of tissue is taken from the lining of the esophagus. Upper GI series or barium swallow looks at the shape of the upper GI tract. While drinking barium to coat the inner lining of the upper GI tract, several x-rays are taken as the barium moves through the GI tract, showing problems related to GERD, such as hiatal hernias, esophageal strictures, or ulcers. Esophageal pH and impedance monitoring is the most accurate procedure to detect acid reflux. A thin tube is passed through the nose or mouth into the esophagus to measure when and how much acid comes up into the esophagus. The other end of the tube attaches to a monitor that records measurements for 24 hours during normal eating and sleeping. This type of pH monitoring can also be done with a wireless capsule attached to the wall of the esophagus for 48 hours, after which it will fall off and pass through the digestive tract within 7 to 10 days. Esophageal manometry measures muscle contractions in the esophagus with a soft thin tube passed through the nose into the esophagus that is connected to a computer. This procedure can be done during an office visit and can show if symptoms are related to a weak sphincter muscle. Several lifestyle changes can be made to reduce GERD symptoms. Avoid overeating and avoid foods or drinks that cause reflux, including greasy, spicy, and fatty foods, tomatoes and tomato products, chocolate, peppermint, coffee or other caffeine drinks, and alcoholic drinks. Lose weight if needed, do not eat two to three hours before bedtime and stay upright for three hours after meals. Sleep on a slight angle by raising the head of the bed six to eight inches with wood blocks under the bedposts. Just sleeping on extra pillows will not help. Wear loose fitting clothing around the abdomen. Stop smoking and avoid secondhand smoke. Depending on the severity of symptoms, the doctor may recommend lifestyle changes, medicines, surgery, or a combination. There are several over-the-counter and prescription medications used for treating GERD symptoms. Antacids, such as Maalox, Mylanta, Rolaids, or Tums are often recommended first to neutralize stomach acid. 
Overuse can cause side effects such as diarrhea or constipation. H2 blockers such as Tagamet, Pepsid, or Zantac decrease acid production from the stomach for up to 12 hours, providing relief from acid reflux. Proton pump inhibitors lower the amount of acid the stomach makes and are better for treating GERD symptoms than H2 blockers as they allow time for the esophageal lining to heal. However, long-term use of PPIs increase the risk of bone fracture and vitamin B12 deficiency. Prescription PPIs include Nexium, Prevacid, Prilosec, and Protonix. Lower strength Prilosec and Prevacid is available over the counter. Prokinetics help the stomach empty faster and include prescription Uricoline and Reglan. These both have side effects including nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, depression, anxiety, and delayed or abnormal physical movement. Surgery may be recommended if GERD symptoms do not improve with lifestyle changes or medications. Nissen fundoplication is the most common surgery for GERD, often leading to long-term reflux control. The surgery is done laparoscopically under general anesthesia. This involves using a flexible tube with a tiny video camera through three to four small incisions in the abdomen. The top of the stomach is sewn around the esophagus to add pressure to the lower end of the esophagus and reduce reflux. Endoscopic procedures are done under general anesthesia using an endoscope or a tube with a tiny video camera that travels through the digestive tract. Endoscopic sewing uses small stitches to tighten the sphincter muscle. Radiofrequency ablation creates heat lesions or sores that help tighten the sphincter muscle. And the Lynx device is a ring of tiny magnetic titanium beads wrapped around the junction of the esophagus and stomach. The magnetic attraction keeps the opening closed enough to prevent acid reflux, but weak enough so food can pass through it. Nursing tips to instruct the patient with GERD include the following. Avoid foods that cause GERD symptoms. Avoid circumstances that increase intra-abdominal pressure, such as bending, straining, heavy lifting, coughing, and tight clothing. Avoid substances that reduce sphincter control, such as tobacco, alcohol, caffeine, fatty foods, and certain drugs. Sit upright after meals and eat small, frequent meals. Eat meals at least two to three hours before lying down, and lose weight if needed. It is important to teach the patient what causes reflux and how to avoid it with diet, lifestyle changes, medication, and possibly surgery. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on GERD. Be sure to subscribe and like us on Facebook, and for more of our video tutorials, check out the description below.